morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Elizabeth's on this third Sunday of Easter. I invite you to stand as you're able as we begin our worship by singing Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless on page 343 in the Blue Hymnal. God be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters, letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus, in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight and at the home of of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all people who, who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, yes, for he is. He is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. The, psal the Psalter appointed for today comes from Psalm 10, no, 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. Sing to the Lord, you servants, you servants of him. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. Weep, weeping may spread the sight, spend the sight. Weeping may spend the night. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. Then you hid your face. I cried to you, O Lord. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. You have turned my wailing into dancing. Therefore, my heart sings to you without, eat, without ceasing.
The second letter, second letter this morning is from the book of Revelation to John. I looked and I heard the voice of an angel surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with full voice. Worthy is the Lord that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. You're able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night, they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you no fish? Have you, have, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there and fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, 
Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Brunch and nakedness. Two things we don't often talk about in Scripture. Well, at least not brunch. The brunch in today's gospel is not the kind of brunch I would be interested in. First of all, there are no mimosas. And second of all, I'm not a fish person. But why on earth is Simon Peter naked as a jaybird in a boat? Weren't there laws about such things? Did his friends not care? Did the disciples all live like this, naked and afraid? It reminded me how in Genesis 2, Adam and Eve were naked and had absolutely no shame until they heard God approaching. Or better yet, like when a two-year-old, fresh out of the bath, runs throughout the house streaking with joy as a parent runs behind them with a towel trying to catch them. That feeling of being free is one that I know many of us can relate to. There's nothing like the feeling of coming home and removing all constrictive clothing and getting into something more comfortable to finish our day. In Scripture, there is a precedence that when God comes near, we put our clothes on. Adam and Eve, post-Apple, realized this for when they heard God walking in the garden, they covered themselves with loincloths. Remember the naked man in, who battled demons in the book of Mark? The first thing he does when he is brought into his right mind is he puts clothes on. And today, we have the frustrated fisherman who has already denied Jesus three times, but when Simon Peter realized that the man instructing him from the seashore was Jesus, he put clothes on and went to him immediately. Simon Peter headed, heeded the counsel of Jesus. He cast his net again, and he reaped a harvest, and he brought the fish ashore to Jesus. Then the, the provided the tired men, Jesus then provided the tired men with a brunch, a repast of fish and bread. And then he took Peter aside privately. Simon Peter, Jesus asked him, 
Do you love me? Lord, Simon Peter said, you know everything. You know that I love you. And two more times, Jesus asks Simon Peter, do you love me? And two more times, Jesus tells Jesus tells see it, Simon Peter tells Jesus, "Yes, Lord. Yes, you know that I love you." And two more times, Jesus tells Simon Peter, "Then feed my sheep. Tend my flock." These three declarations of love rebuke the three denials that we saw Peter with just a few chapters ago. Gospel lessons like this are always full of salvific images and themes. For example, doing the work of the baptized is seeing Peter putting on his clothes and jumping out of the water, out of the boat and into the water to get to Jesus. He models for us that we have to step out of the boat to do the work of our faith because it doesn't just happen by walking through the doors of this church or watching us on live stream. The theme of hospitality, breaking of the bread, the sharing of the cup, is continued here in this breakfast that Jesus prepared for the disciples. Jesus continues with acts of hospitality from the breaking of bread and sharing of the cup to the Last Supper here on the seashore. Hospitality goes hand in hand with community. And it's at the very heart of Christian identity. And Jesus is modeling for us what it means in our lives when we say we do, in fact, love Jesus. It's that we feed his sheep. Hear me when I say this. Community and hospitality are at the heart of Christian identity. It's how we interact with one another. It's how we interact with the world. We see the idea of giving a portion of what we net to God. Jesus reminds us that all good things, every blessing of harvest that we have, every paycheck, every bounty of fish, all of it comes from God. And he tells us to bring a portion to him. And today's gospel is yet another reminder that God goes to every length to have a relationship with us, even when we have denied him. And all of this points to that there's a responsibility that comes with being in relationship with God. Now, that may mean having brunch with your friends from time to time, sure. It means you definitely got to put clothes on. <laughs> before you go out to do the work of loving and serving the Lord. But it also means that you've got to get out of the boat. You have to be among God's people. You have to be in your community. And you are called to be in the midst of your neighbors, feeding them in body, mind, and spirit. Let me be clear that God meets you where you are. God is not looking for perfection. And God is not the one to put any impediments between you and the divine. God only asks for your love. And that you do something that you do something with the fruits of that love that you receive from God. So I ask you today, what are you doing with that love? Do you ever feel like Simon Peter? Caught at an inconvenient time <laughs> and perhaps not at your best? Funny how that seems to be the way of God's perfect timing, to present you with an opportunity to be faithful and to trust when it's not the most convenient time. 
My bet is that more often than not, this is where many of us find ourselves. So, do you love me? And if you do, please get up. Get out of the boat and go feed my people. Shepherd of souls, draw us to yourself and draw us in love to one another so that we might always be ready to feed your sheep. Amen. stand or kneel as you are able as we affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, of all that, that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light from light, light, true God from true God. God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for the parishes of the Concord River Deanery, St. Anne's in the Fields Church, Lincoln, St. Paul's Church, Natick, Trinity Chapel, Shirley, St. Mark's Church, Southboro, and for acolytes and lay Eucharistic ministers everywhere, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. And peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those on our parish prayer list, including Mandy, Zachary, Derek, Mary, Annette, Laura, Robert, Kathy, Meg, Andrew, Marion, Carolyn, Art, Cheryl, Catherine, Sarah, Max, Liz, Ellie, Betty, and Connie that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Grant to us all that is in accordance with your will, dear Jesus, and accomplish your salvation among us. For you are risen from the dead and dwell in majesty with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank God for all they've done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there shall no longer be any death. And there shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. And surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share signs of peace with those around you. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Just a few announcements this morning. And good morning to all of you watching online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is good to be together and to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. A couple announcements for you. We have a lovely coffee hour today, and so we hope that you'll join us after the service for some refreshments. I also wanted to remind you that on Sunday, May 15th, two from today, we're having an all-parish coffee hour where for um, the time that we are together, we'll have some sheets that have printed on them all the parish activities for the next six months, and we'll be looking for leadership of those activities in that meeting. So we hope that you'll come on the 15th to participate in that. If things don't get signed up for, what does it mean? They won't happen. So if you are unable to go to the, fifth, to the meeting on the 15th, we'll put some of the uh, events in the e-news that week, and you can email the office and let us know if you want to sign up to participate and be a leader for some of those events. I also want to let you know that um, we had quite a bit of work happening in the parish this week. If you came by, uh, you would have seen that we had construction tape and pylons and all sorts of things in the front um, we had our concrete walkway replaced, which was awesome. We've been needing to do that for some years. Um, it was getting to the point where it was dangerous. And so we are very, very thankful for the provision to, to get that fixed. We also had the electric company in here this week because they gifted us um, a huge gift. Um, they came in and they took down all of our old lighting and replaced it with green, energy-efficient lighting. Not here, because this is new, um, but everything in this part of the building and downstairs, both floors. The lighting is absolutely beautiful, if you've not seen it. It's, this was all free. There was no charge to the church. And this, over time, will save us significantly, um, not only money, but the use of the actual power 
And as uh, people of faith, we want to be as, as good a stewards as we can of God's resources. And so this was something that we were very grateful for. And so one of the things I wanted to let you know is um, some of the lights, the larger overhead lights, not in here, but in this part of the building, now have sensors. So if you forget to turn a light off, it will go out behind you when you're not there. And sometimes if you're sitting in a meeting and everyone is kind of somber and keeping to themselves, the lights may go out. And so you have to move your arms and get up once in a while and, and turn the sensors back on. But all this is to say, sometimes when you turn the light on, it comes on for five seconds, goes off for two seconds, and it comes back on. And that's just activating the sensor. So just know that there's nothing wrong if they go off for a few seconds, they'll come back on. Um, Kirsten. Good morning. Excuse me. Good morning. I'm all choked up talking to you. Kirsten Varner, Investory Person of the Week. I'd like to welcome anyone new or visiting, but I feel like I recognize everyone here, so you're probably not new. Um, but if you are, um, feel free to fill out a visitor information card at the end of each pew, hand it to myself, to the usher, Louise, who's back there somewhere. Um, I'm glad that you just mentioned that little fun fact about the light, because I thought I blew a circuit making the coffee, because <laughs> the lights went off, <laughs> and, I was like, and then they came back on. Um, so yes, there is coffee. Please join us. There's plenty of treats and for the grown-ups and the kids alike. And I don't have anything else to say, so happy Sunday. Enjoy the sunshine. But <laughs> take a cup of coffee, because I made it. One more thing to draw your attention to. For the last few weeks, we've been advertising that we are partnering with St. Augustine's Chapel in, at Vanderbilt in Nashville um, to send seed packets to families in the Ukraine. And there was a specific list of seed requests that some organizations over there have. And so um, we've partnered several churches to gather these seeds and send them over to Ukraine. And so I just want to see what this, I want you to see what this community has brought in. And so we're going to bless these seeds today, and we'll send them to Nashville this week, and then they'll be forwarded to Ukraine. And so if you brought seeds with you today, oh, looks like we've got some more. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a beautiful offering to send to them. And so um, at the end of the service, We'll have a special prayer for these seeds, and we'll send them to Tennessee this week. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? No? Huh. All right. Well, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, Elizabeth, Magdalene, Naomi, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived, died, and rose again for you. And feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. This is God's table where we offer these gifts to all who hunger. the bread of heaven, Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you always. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you always. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, 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 the bread of heaven.
special prayer for these seeds. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of crop and harvest. We pray that these seeds be a blessing for people who have known destruction to the eighth degree. We pray that these seeds are a blessing for those who are wondering where their next meal will come from. We pray that you bless these seeds with love, that they may continue to feed villages of people and bring nourishment to your people. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, bless you and keep you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.